two years ago, as many other people here in Europe, uh, I rushed to purchase a solar system for my house, only to discover that uh, it seems that everybody had the same idea and the installers uh, were overwhelmed uh, and uh, had a backlog longer than one year to, to deliver. So eventually I decided to do everything myself, not without uh, some setbacks and uh, unexpected problems. So it is after this experience uh, that I thought to share with you what I've learned in these two parts uh, presentation. In previous presentation, various solar systems uh, were discussed, uh, including the topic about the maximum power point. And if you're interested in this topic, uh, uh, I put a link here or down below in the description. And today we will go inside the typical solar inverter to understand how it works. So with no more ado, let's get started. This is the uh, functional block of the inverter. Let's start with, from the AC input and uh, we have the uh, AC breaker. The AC breaker is uh, controlled by the main controller of the inverter and it is used to uh, detach uh, the inverter from the uh, grid when the power on the grid is gone or uh, turned on when the power goes back. This is important because uh, the inverter must not uh, provide energy back to the grid if the uh, grid is down. Because in, the, in case of maintenance, uh, the guys <laughs> that works on the power line won't be electrocuted by your inverter giving back power <laughs> even if they turn it off. And then we have the core part of the inverter which is the PWM switching inverter uh, that converts from DC, which comes from the photovoltaic uh, uh, strings or panels, and then it converts uh, the uh, DC voltage into AC sinusoidal, sinusoidal uh, voltage. Then we have the uh, maximum power point uh, uh, boost converter and uh, converts from DC to DC, rising the voltage if required to compensate the uh, lower voltage in the case uh, the panel has not enough, enough uh, sunlight or in short to adjust the power point, the maximum power point. And finally we have the battery charger which is a back converter and a DC-DC converter that uh, transform the energy that comes from the photovoltaic panels back to the battery to charge the battery uh, or in sometimes with a hybrid uh, uh, inverter even the AC power uh, goes back uh, to the battery using this uh, configuration. So what's actually inside the inverter? This is the uh, high frequency on grid transformerless inverter diagram and um, here at input at the output uh, and uh, at the photovoltaic input we have uh, uh, CM common mode uh, EMI filters uh, because inverters uh, generate a lot of noise and um, here we have the uh, voltage sensor and current sense for the AC input that comes from, from here and is connected to the uh, to the grid and uh, and then here we have the AC output that goes to uh, our um, appliances into our home and uh, here we have the AC input connect relay that connects the AC input with the, the inverter. And then uh, here we have the core part of the inverter, which is made of uh, these four um, transistors that are switches uh, that commutate uh, the uh, high voltage DC bus here uh, into uh, an AC waveform uh, through a pulse with modulation 
as you can see here this is for illustrative purposes only uh, it is not the actual frequency which is much higher than than here and here we have the photovoltaic boost dc dc converter that uh, receives the uh, energy from the photovoltaic input and uh, rises the voltage if the voltage is not enough because maybe uh, it is a cloudy day and um, and here this is controlled by the mine uh, controller of the inverter that is not uh, illustrated here and uh, and it is controlled by the maximum power point uh, tracker uh, so the maximum power power point tracker essentially tries to rise the voltage when the voltage is too low uh, making a compromise uh, checking for the current uh, when it reaches the maximum voltage and the maximum current then that is the maximum power point uh, that is achievable for that specific uh, instant and this is the hybrid uh, inverter and the only difference uh, in respect to the previous uh, version is this part here this uh, circuitry that is uh, used to manage battery and um, and here we have uh, this part that is a buck, a buck converter uh, here we have uh, this transistor uh, this diode this inductor and this capacitor uh, that form uh, together the buck converter in this direction um, because when the current flows in this direction uh, like so um, maybe we have here a higher voltage uh, at 500 volt uh, uh, for example for a 230 volt uh, inverter uh, less of of course uh, we if the inverter works on uh, under 10 volt uh, and uh, the current uh, uh, must be reduced uh, to a fixed level here uh, to make it work uh, correctly this part of the circuit and this is essentially a dc dc converter uh, through an high frequency transformer uh, that moves the power from this part uh, to this part uh, charging the battery when the uh, high voltage bus here is at its uh, maximum voltage uh, or uh, has enough voltage to charge the battery but when we don't have uh, mm, the photovoltaic uh, cells uh, that provide power and uh, here we have the minimum voltage uh, then in that case the battery could uh, provide power in the reverse so this uh, is a, a bi-directional converter and uh, the the energy flows in and the energy flows in this direction and uh, in this case this transistor is uh, closed uh, is always on uh, so the current can flow in this direction uh, unhindered providing energy to the high voltage bus and here a couple of uh, important considerations um, because uh, here we have only a, a boost converter the input from the uh, photovoltaic uh, string must never exceed the maximum voltage of the uh, DC high voltage DC bus here and um, another important point is that the input of the photovoltaic is not uh, isolated in respect to the high voltage bus and this uh, has uh, important implications as we will see uh, soon the difference uh, with the inverter that uh, has the insulating transformer is here is this uh, that we have here an insulating transformer that insulate the high voltage dc bus uh, in respect to the ac line but this part uh, is expensive and introduce some losses uh, and uh, uh, because inverter uh, 
tend to be uh, tend to have the best efficiency let's say we have 85 uh, percent uh, even few percent here have their weight uh, basically in modern inverter this part is removed altogether and we have uh, this uh, this configuration here uh, but what are the side effects uh, well uh, as we can see in this animation uh, when we start uh, the modulation we this transistor is turned on and uh, this transistor modulates uh, making this uh, uh, pulse with modulation and this waveform in, at the output uh, and when the phase reverses uh, the opposite happens uh, this one enters in conduction and this starts to modulate uh, generating this uh, other waveform and the uh, corresponding sine wave at the output however this uh, imply that uh, this positive is connected alternatively to the live or this negative to the live at the frequency of 50 hertz or 60 hertz for you guys on the other side of the pond and uh, and this uh, uh, can be seen here at the PV input uh, terminals and um, if the uh, you might think uh, well uh, they were not that smart uh, they would have uh, turned on this and this transistor attentively at 50 Hertz uh, or 60 Hertz and modulating this one this other two transistors but uh, in that case we would have anyway the the waveform the pulse width modulation that would be transferred here this is what i've measured with the oscilloscope uh, at the uh, positive uh, sorry uh, uh, negative and across negative and ground and uh, this is what i've measured with the oscilloscope uh, at the uh, pv input and uh, this one is uh, on the other uh, with positive uh, in respect and positive to ground and this has some unexpected side effects uh, because um, solar panels are uh, have capacitance here uh, where the cells uh, the edge of the cells uh, is close to the frame uh, this uh, makes uh, two plates of a capacitor and because these cells are subject to um, this square waveform connect in respect to the ground here we have a, a voltage in respect to ground and if, if this point is connected to ground here we have a, a current that will flow through this capacitor it, c it can be seen uh, in this way we, here we have the this capacitor that is the capacitance uh, that we have here across the um, age of the of the cells and the frame of the panels and uh, and uh, here we have uh, in this example a resistor to make a, a resistor to ground to make a measurement and through the oscilloscope I measured this uh, peak of voltage uh, and, uh, and this uh, I calculated is uh, corresponding to a capacitance of uh, about 500 picofarad for four panels in parallel so uh, this could cause some problems when you are going to ground the uh, the frame of the of the panels because you will get a current that will flow through this uh, capacitance an important uh, critical point is the neutral uh, protective earth bonding relay. Uh, this is uh, important because when we open uh, the this switch, this relay, and we detach uh, the uh, inverter from the uh, grid, uh, the neutral now becomes floating in respect to the uh, earth, uh, the protective earth. So it is necessary to close this contact to restore this uh, this connection this bond uh, with uh, the with the ground and uh, 
This can be seen here with external typical wiring. We can see here that we have the utility grid uh, comes from here and there they connect uh, the neutral to ground and uh, here we have the main junc junction box uh, at our house and uh, and here we have again earth that is connected to the neutral here we have the cables that comes into our home and are connected to the inverter and when this um, opens we need to recreate this bonding through this contact however it is important to consider that uh, if we have this uh, an RCD which is typical um, this would trip because because this the it is important not to make this floating never floating this so there is a brief moment in which uh, both contacts are closed so here would flow a current would flow current uh, through the neutral this because the neutral and the PE are not at the same voltage uh, uh, even though they are uh, connected here at the main junction box uh, in particular if you have long wires uh, from here to here uh, in particular if there are some loads here the voltage drop on the wires would be sufficient to make this uh, RCD to trip because uh, th there will be a, a certain current that would flow through the earth in this way. Well I hope you found interesting this video, if so consider to subscribe and hit the like button, it doesn't cost anything to you but it helps the channel to grow. Also in my website at accidentalscience.com you can find uh, complementary information and uh, more. Uh, for today that's all folks, thanks for watching, see you next time, bye!